Okay guys, we're back after a uh, much more difficult than expected cleanup process. So, um, our primary tools for cleaning, <laughs> that old grease off for these two right here. Um, that stuff was just unbelievable. Uh, I mean, it was as hard as paint and pretty much had to scrape it um, for the most part. Uh, I ended up uh, using lacquer thinner um, and that actually dissolved it, not completely, but at least it softened it enough that I could scrub it off. It was just, that, that grease was just unbelievable how, how dried out it was. And uh, I don't know if you saw the date on the, um, on the inspection tag, but basically this thing's from 2004. So it's been sitting in the box for 16 years. So anyways, uh, let's have a look. So um, there was some surface rust in a few spots um, and we had a lot of where the plastic you know, was making contact, um, probably getting some condensation and we had a lot of um, staining from the plastic that was uh, kind of a, just a light rust. So what I ended up doing was soaking it in evaporust for about three hours. And then of course that, turned it black <laughs> so then I had to scrub it really good with um, actually used barkeepers friend and then uh, and then some metal polish and then uh, did some scotch bright and a little buffing wheel to kind of bring the, the color back out uh, there were a few burrs that I had to clean up nothing too bad uh, and then uh, I went around with a stone and just lightly stoned the uh, the back uh, uh, face here and and this face and we had to deburr a little bit on the uh, the pinion holes so um, and then oiled everything down with LPS2 so casualties um, let's see if this shows up the um, the laser etching for the uh, uh, the model number and, and so forth you can still read it if you get the right angle, but it's it it took quite a bit of that out. The uh, evapor rust did, uh, so minor casualty. Everything else um, looks pretty good, um, and just the cleaning was just just took forever to get that stuff off. And we went around this surface with a stone and uh, just you know just lightly touched that up and against the back uh, register here. Okay, um, so essentially we're ready to go back together. So our first order of business is to install the scroll. Okay, now um, I went on the uh, the web and uh, went with the practical machinist and a few other sites. Okay, so what do you, what does everybody recommend? Grease or oil, mainly for the scroll here. Um, quite a few guys on practical machinists recommend using a dry Molly lube spray, which makes sense because this is where your you know your your swarf is going to uh, work its way into. And if you put use grease, I mean, grease is just going to hang on to it. Um, now, I don't have any dry molly lube spray, so I think we're going to use whey oil on, on the scroll here. So let's go ahead and, uh, and put some of that on. We cleaned out all the... Uh, all our tapped holes, blew them out, sprayed a little bit of lube in there. This is what I like, um, the Super Lube. It's a silicone grease, and I don't think it dries out like uh, like regular lithium grease. It's that that stuff that they had had used at the factory you know I don't know what it was but it uh, it was some pretty gnarly stuff
got our retainer plate. I don't think it matters which way this orientates. Uh, I had to go back on the footage and look how this came off. So I put a little witness mark here. And we're going to line that up with... There we go. Our zero pinion. feels really good okay now <laughs> anybody who's got a sharp eye just noticed that I forgot an important step here <laughs> all right I've been uh, been waiting for it's been like two days since I since uh, we cut away for the cleaning and I just want to get this done because I got some other projects to work on so one a little faster than I should here. So we left out <laughs> the uh, retaining pins for the pinions. Where'd they go? There they are. They were hiding underneath something. That's why I didn't see them. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's get these in there. looking at the thermometer 87 in here today normally I'd have the fan on but that thing is so noisy that's all you guys would be hearing is the fan screaming all right that looks good okay one two three Get the uh, the jaws in here. We'll put number one at the top here. We've got to kind of keep it partially off the bench so I can. Hey, we're right there. Okay. Just make sure everything comes together at the same time. Looks like we're going to be good. Okay, that looks really good. All right. All right, let's see what we got here. This is number three. And number three is this one right here, right in front of us. Okay, I like that. Nice fit. 
I put a, one drop of oil on each of these uh, threads while you guys weren't looking. All right, we got a little witness mark here. I'll put it on this side. Our back plate. Back plate cleaned up no problem. And I did, I think I mentioned I did stone the back here. And somewhere around here we got a witness mark. There it is right there. Line that up. Okay. Make sure all our screw holes are lining up. And we're gonna get a drop of oil on our fasteners. Yeah, I've been uh, I keep moving this thing around. It's been in the box here for a year since I picked it up. It's been over on the toolbox, over by the mill. It's been over here on the bench. It's been under the bench. <laughs> uh, it's time to get it installed. So we're just going to make contact here. Just kind of going crisscross here. Alright, let me grab a soft hammer. This side's starting, but this side doesn't want to start. It's a pretty tight fit. I'll use one of our jacking screws to bring that up a little bit. There we go. Let's see if we get this side to start. There we go. I'm sure I could just draw that down with the with the screws. It wouldn't hurt it, but it's always nice to get it the nice smooth start. I'm just looking wherever we're slightly high. I'm working that side first. Let's get this guy out of here. crisscross here okay I like it Got a piece of wood here. Just gonna put that in the jaws. 
something like that. And then we'll give it same thing, just kind of going crisscrossing and working our way around. These were way too tight in my opinion when I first took it apart, so we're not going to go to that extreme. So while we got it right here, let's put a little whey oil on these threads. These threads look really good. I'm going to move you guys around. We're going to go over to the lathe. We've got to take off the four jaw and we're going to see if this is going to fit. Okay, we're over here at the lathe and hopefully I can do this without knocking the tripod over. <laughs> so we're going to pull off our four jaw. Um, I got a, just a bar of aluminum. That's what I used to uh, grab onto the chuck. We got our protector plate here. And what we're going to do, we're going to put it in back gear without pulling our release pin. There we go. Now you got to be careful doing this guys because the um, the the woodruff key that attaches the main bull gear to the uh, spindle shaft it's not that big of a key and if you put a lot of torque on it you can shear that key off or you can break a tooth on your back gear. So if you've got a, a chuck that's stuck, you want to be careful and not overdo it. Okay, and as you saw, I don't, I don't tighten them up super tight. And then uh, Mr. Pete recommended this, always put a board underneath in case you drop it. You're, uh, you're not going to damage your ways. threads here. Uh, we're looking pretty good here. I'm, I'm going to blow them out though. I'm going to get the air gun. And I'm just going to give it just a little bit of extra oil here. Okay, here we go. Back into the back here. You want to go gently when you're testing out a new fit here. If you got a something galling on the threads or whatever, you don't want to get stuck and then not be able to get it off. Okay, so just looking and let me see if I can bring you guys over here a little closer. So I don't know how well you can see that. Just looking to see if we have any daylight. And it looks like we've got a good fit up. Okay. Put you guys back over here. All right. Okay, we're back in back here. Now it doesn't take much. So I usually go to a touch, back off about a quarter turn, and then just, that's it. I've made the mistake of <laughs> spinning it too fast and really hammering it on there and uh, uh, it'll really stick tight so you really got to be careful you don't want to overdo it okay if you ever get one stuck what I had to do when I got this lathe originally Bubba had installed it and there were pipe wrench marks on the back of the spindle I had to make a clamp arrangement with a three foot bar the clamp on the back of the spindle and then I had a three-foot cheater on the on the uh, chuck, and it was it was a job to break it loose. 
I don't think it had been off in years. So, okay, um, I'm going to do a test run. Move you guys over here a bit. In fact, I'm going to go grab my apron. Hold on. <laughs> I... Okay, we've turned our power on. My uh, swarf curtain <laughs> pulled back here. And let's just jog first and see how she runs. We're on our medium speed uh, pulley. Okay, that looks good. I don't want to go too fast without without having something in the chuck, so we'll just... Uh, yeah, here comes the oil. I'm going to let it sling the oil for a minute here. Okay. Alright, let me find a piece of stock we can put in there. Bring it right back. All right, guys, we got a piece of chrome shaft here. This stuff is pretty true. It feels like we're getting good, even engagement on all the jaws. Let's get every pin in here. See how that runs. And speed her up a bit. Get some oil flinging. Gonna be the moment of truth here. You gotta get close to the jaws first. Zero or dial here. Looks like about it was like one and a half. Yeah, let's call it two thousandths. Okay. Let's see what happens if we run it on jog. Okay, so two thousandths. Let's come out here to the end. Also looks like two thousandths, eh, maybe a just a tad more. Looks like it's also two thousandths, so that's good. So actually, we're we're running good. You know, for a three jaw, I'm not complaining. That's uh, that's pretty good. Let's uh, reposition a little bit. See if we can make an improvement. Like I made it worse. <laughs> Let's come in here. About a thou and a half.
we're going to call it a thou and a half. And that's about two and a half. Okay. Well, I'm going to call that good, guys. That's, that's pretty good for a three jaw. Better than anything I've had in the past, that's for sure. Okay, hey, it's getting late. I'm going to uh, wrap this up. Um, we may have something to put at the end of the video here. Um, I won't know until I get this thing edited. <laughs> okay, thanks, guys. Thanks.